Jeff Grubb, GamesBeat here. And I have the RX 480 from AMD, their new Radeon graphics uh, card. It is a $200 GPU, and it's their new top of the line device. Top of the line for this new range. Uh, there might be some more powerful cards, even from AMD out there. Uh, but in, but in, you know, overall, this is the new device that they're pushing at their high end, uh, especially for virtual reality. We're going to get started here in a second. I'll save the benchmarks for the end. Uh, we'll check that out. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'm going to get into the review right now. Let's jump right into what I like about the RX 480. It's got a little price, but it gives you big power. Uh, the price to performance ratio here is kind of off the charts. Um, AMD has kind of done this before with uh, its 390. Was was very similar in terms of its price to performance ratio. Uh, the 290 before that. This time around though with the 480 it's kind of going, it's reaching a whole new threshold of power for dollar. $200 for 5.8 teraflops. That's not a great measure, teraflops. Real world performance will often vary uh, for two cards that claim to have similar teraflops. For example, uh, the NVIDIA's GTX 1070 claims to have a, a similar amount of teraflops uh, and it's you know three hundred and eighty dollars in real world performance when you do the benchmarks you're going to see that the 1070 is typically going to outperform the 480 uh, but I don't know if it's going to perform it uh, to the tune of hundred eighty dollars more so when we're talking about two hundred dollars we're talking about a really good bargain Two hundred bucks is not a lot of money when we're talking about graphics cards, especially when we're talk when we see the Nvidia GTX 1080 coming out at six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars for the founder's version. Uh, that's a big number. At two hundred dollars, we're getting to a point where AMD is just absolutely assaulting the mass market. They want people who are considering PC gaming for the first time, people who haven't upgraded in five years, people who want to do VR. But don't want to spend you know three hundred and three hundred fifty dollars for a card that's going to be kind of future proof. And in this case, that's what AMD has done. They have, they're they're hitting all those things. Boom, boom, boom. Um, and they're doing it at a price point that is kind of hard to say no to. Now, before I get more into VR, I'm going to drop in a few charts, a few benchmarks I ran. The only other card I have on hand right now is the 980 Ti. I wanted to do one-to-one uh, -one comparisons with my system. Running, uh, I ran everything on Ultra, i5, 4690K, uh, V-Sync off, Windows 10, you know, 64-bit. All that important information. Um, I compared that to the to the 980 Ti, which I think is is fair because the 980 Ti is almost exactly what you're going to get in terms of performance uh, from the 1070. They are you know neck and neck, the 1070 and the 980 Ti. So I figured that that would be a good comparison to like kind of what NVIDIA and AMD are coming out with for their mass market products. Now I know NVIDIA is going to have the 1060 very soon, but it's not out yet. And now both the 1070 and the 480 are on the market. I figured it would be good to kind of compare those two. So the big deal with the 480 from AMD, one of their big pushing points, the thing that they are trying to sell this card on is virtual reality. Virtual reality hasn't really caught on yet, I don't think. I cover it, I write about it all the time. I use it, I have both a Rift and a Vive in my house. Um, but I think most people are, are holding off. And the cards are likely to blame for this, the graphics cards, because both Oculus and Valve, who runs Steam VR, which powers the HTC Vive, recommend something in the NVIDIA GTX 970 range. Now that card is $200, but that's going to get you the bare minimum. It's $200 today. Um, but that's, that's going to get you the bare minimum for VR. And a lot of games are running pretty rough on a 970 in VR. So if you're going to jump in, you're going to build something new, you probably want to go in and buy something that's more capable. And the 480 is definitely more robust than that. It can handle VR. Uh, I ran a few tests with it. Um, again, it's, it's hard to benchmark VR because everything tries to force 90 frames per second, you know, 100% of the time. Um, so, like, there's a lot of, you know, tricks that go into that, so it's hard to compare game to game and card to card. Uh, but for the most part, I, I ran, like, the Steam, Steam VR performance test, and that put it well into its ready category 
Uh, that's like its highest level for VR when testing cards. Um, and I think that's fair. Just experientially, just using it, I can tell you that it was fine. No drop frames, it rendered everything just fine. Uh, it was a card that was not breaking a sweat. That kind of actually brings me to my next point, and this is the final kind of big thing here about what I like about the 480. It is quiet, it's cool, and it's energy conscious. Now, for this new generation of cards, AMD dropped from a 28 nanometer die, you know, it's the, basically the little, the little parts that, you know, power the chip, whatever. It's technical, it doesn't really matter. But it went from 28 nanometers down to 14 nanometers. That is a huge difference in terms of heat production. Uh, the bigger those dies, the bigger the fabrication, uh, the more heat they produce, and that's more of a problem to deal with, uh, with fans and other cooling methods. This means that, that this is one of the big reasons that AMD is able to get more power from such a low-priced device, uh, because it, it's got, you know, it's smaller, it's not, it doesn't have to put as much effort into cooling the device, it all just works. Now, this also makes it energy efficient, as I said. So, last generation A390 from AMD required 275 watts. This only needs 150 watts. You know, that's a very tiny number. It means you're going to be able to, you're going to be saving money on your energy bill every month even if you keep your PC all, all, on all the time. That'll make a huge difference. Um, and at the same time it's cool and quiet because of the less heat, so the fans not running all the time and it, even when it is, it's very quiet. It's very uh, low decibel level. All this means that you're going to get a computer with a powerful VR ready chip that's not going to blow out your ears. It's not going to, you know, overwhelm your microphone with whirring noises and buzzing. It's going to it's going to be quiet, it's going to be cool, and it's not going to, you know, ding your energy bill every month. Uh, that's huge. I'm going to shift gears into what I don't like and it's kind of unfair cuz there's not a lot here to dislike. Uh, you know, when you hit some, when you hit that price to power ratio, when you have something that's quiet and powerful, my cat just almost knocked me over. Um, when you have something that's quiet and powerful, it, that's kind of everything you want in a card. Now, at the same time, what else do you want in a card? Well, you want it to be able to run 4K. This is not a 4K gaming card. It's just not. That's not what AMD is going for. They decided, they saw the market, they saw what NVIDIA was going to do. They knew that NVIDIA was going to come out with something super powerful, a high-end card aimed at 4K gaming, and AMD decided to just sweep the legs and go for that price point. Just attack NVIDIA where it's weak, and that's at that, and that's at cost. You know, not everyone's going to spend six hundred dollars on a card. Most people aren't. If you're building a new PC, you're looking for something that is going to just be, you know, that that better ratio that I keep nailing, that I keep you know repeating, price to power ratio. That's what most people are going to consider, and AMD is like. You know, let's, instead of trying to have a card right out the gate that is for the 4K gamer, this small part of the market for now, let's do something that is for everybody. And that's what it has. And I'm kind of blending into my conclusion here now at this point. Um, because it's kind of, un like I said, it's kind of unfair because that's not what AMD is go going for. It's not going for 4K. And, you know, surprise, surprise, 480 runs like shit on 4K. It just does. Um, and that's fine. You know, I, I think you might have something here if you combined two 480s. If you run that in a Crossfire configuration, you know, at $400 to $500, depending on which version of the 480 you get. Um, that maybe you got something there that can handle 4K a little bit better. But at the same time, I feel like just maybe holding off, kind of seeing what AMD does. And for now, just accepting the fact that you're going to be able to play VR... You're going to be able to play every modern release right now, for the most part, at 1080, 60 frames per second, with, with you know a, a few exceptions. Uh, that's a huge deal. That, to me, just makes a lot more sense uh, for most people, and for AMD specifically. They are doing what's right for them, and in turn, they're creating this really interesting dichotomy in the GPU market where we have one company providing just you know balls to the wall power and the other saying hey everybody else we're your dudes 
we got you. We got you in your wallet. Your bank account is going to be okay. And that's that's interesting. It's going to make for an interesting, you know, next year or so. Especially when NVIDIA decides to come out and announce the details of the 1060 and how much it costs and when that's coming. Because maybe we'll have a little bit more of a battle there now. Because I think AMD has NVIDIA shaking in its boots a little bit. Because NVIDIA, clear, NVIDIA cl clearly had a huge advantage in terms of mind share, in terms of what people expect from a GPU company. And AMD, by shifting into this other you know, mass market mode has really changed the narrative. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I think that kind of blended into my conclusion. Um, what I do now is I don't put a score on this shit because that doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm just going to tell you that I recommend it. I do a recommend or don't recommend. And if you know what you're looking for, if you are building a PC on a budget, you have to consider the 480 at this point. Um, maybe there are better cards for your particular situation. Maybe if you can afford to jump up to a 1070, you might see quite a lot of benefit from that. Uh, clearly the benchmarks show that's the case. But, again, I don't know if it's $180 better. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it. I, I'm just going to say thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to run a lot more benchmarks on this to kind of get a better idea especially for VR um, kind of not I, what I have right now is not comprehensive so this is just a start of the benchmarking for this card uh, but it's a good start so you know thanks for watching I'm Jeffrey Grubb you can get more on gamesbeat.com or you know follow like whatever YouTube stuff I'll catch you next time guys thanks for watching bye